group of 20 meeting has wound up in Toronto with countries basically agreeing to, f to cut their uh, fiscal deficits in half by 2013. Chris Hart, investment strategist at Investment Solutions, joins us now. Uh, Chris, uh, I think the football was obviously a lot more exciting over the weekend than the G20 meeting, so no big surprises coming out there. No, no actually, I, I was just thinking that they should have actually had the G20 meeting. Now, what on earth did they want to have it in Canada for? Firstly, the protesters would have thought, you know, that the crowds there were, were, were gunning for them and, and, and they would have been, and the actual leaders would have been able to have the meeting in peace. Yeah, uh, could have been a spectacle <laughs> in the yeah, and, and watch some soccer in the meantime. But yeah, I think it's a significant that they're cutting their, their deficits. My suspicion is they're trying to make it that they're trying to manage these deficits down on their terms. Uh, but I think basically what the realisation is that they actually have to. They've already reached uh, what you could say ridiculous, unacceptable um, uh, budget deficits, etc., to try and cure whatever was the problem you know that they were trying to cure, and also reflecting some unsustainable uh, fiscal um, uh, expenditures which were, were hidden by good economic times up th you know through to 2000 and six two thousand and seven and um, what now needs to happen is you know at least by doing so who knows the markets might say okay we'll tolerate this because it's going in the right direction um, but essentially if they didn't do that the markets would already be um, you know smashing the debts the CDS, CDS or uh, rates would be going up and and that sort of thing I, I, I am However, concerned when you take a look at some of these deficits, the UK deficit by half, that means a 6% deficit uh, in, by two, two, 2013. Which is still it pretty is, large. It <laughs> is still, uh, you know, mind numbingly large in the sense that it is unsustainable and you'll still have debt levels rise. So, what's giving trouble now will still be deteriorating in terms of the sheer debt levels and it will be a. a um, uh, a drag on the economy. Um, the fiscal stimulus, we need to realise that the fiscal stimulus is when you are expanding your fiscal deficit and so when that starts to trend down, it's you, you start to get fiscal drag and that means US, UK, Europe are in line for a double dip recession. Do you think this was a bit of a trade-off because we know that the, the US was pushing for more stimulus spending yes. which of course Europe can't afford at this stage no. and do you think they were aggressive enough in their ambitions to cut their deficits in half by 2013? I think this is still a compromise. I think it's still very much a compromise with, the, with as you say, the, the meeting being polarised. The US hasn't felt the negative consequences yet, um, and I say yet, of um, the markets hitting their debt, and that's because they do enjoy some special privileges. But you can imagine, with their def deficit, that's being funded at the short end. Effectively, it's like you know the, the, the grocery purchases are being bought on six months' budget on their credit card, and they're just rolling it. And the reason they're doing that because at that end of the yield curve, the the, um, the you know the rates are, are virtually zero. So they they're busy funding themselves uh, and these enormous deficit at, at at a low rate. If they were forced to go longer or uh, or, or, or whatever. Um, their, their, um, their, their solvency starts to be exposed because you start to in, eat into uh, quite fragile um, tax revenues just to pay the interest on the debt that they've incurred. And, and that's the, the, that would be the concern. So if they would have to raise rates because, for instance, they started to quantitatively ease again or whatever, and foreigners sold their, their debt instead of lapping it up, um, it may be a different picture. You talked about uh, double dip recessions. When are we looking at those? Well, I think we're already starting to see the momentum in, in of the recovery turn over. The lead indicators are turning down. The, the money supply, the longer or the broader money supply data is turning down. Uh, property, uh, property is the most obvious area in the US, but I think in the uh, European Union it will be consumer demand that will be pulled back because effectively uh, cutting back expenditures, they're not really prepared to tackle what are called the holy cows, for instance, the national health in the UK. It's a big chunk of expenditure and um, you lose elections. So effectively the electorates are not allowing 
f uh, you know, governments to actually do the right thing, and uh, which means that what we are actually doing is really just applying a plaster to something that needs surgery, you know, very serious surgery, um, because the weight of government spending on what has to support that government spending has become too big. Right, so it's not just interest rates that provide a headwind when they start to move up. It's actually how does the rest of the economy, the wealth producing side of the economy, actually sustain this monster because governments have expanded by quite a quantum leap in the last few, you know, last few years. And um, they're wealth consumers, they're not wealth producers. Um, and the, the, the balance is just not there. And at the same time, uh, with financial sector reform and the likes, uh, regulations are going to put the brakes on parts of the, the wealth producing side of the economy. Exactly. Tax and regulate your, well, your way to, to prosperity. Somehow there's a, a, a miss for me um, that I, I can't get my mind around. And this is why I think we're in trouble, is that we're in, in an intellectual dead end in terms of how we deal with it. Um, uh, too much reliance on governments. Governments have their limitations. They've got a very specific function to perform in society, but wealth production is not. And unfortunately, the way we measure GDP, it's what wealth production plus wealth consumption is, is effectively GDP. And, and, and I have a funny feeling that that's a mistake. Um, and one needs to actually say your wealth production needs support. We need governments to get out of the way, not in the way. And, uh, and, and, and you, whereas you need regulation, you need something that's pragmatic and supportive and enabling environment. And increasingly, these bloated governments are seeing their wealth produ producing sectors as the enemy. In other words, they're taking an increasingly acrimonious um, view of their, their wealth producing sector with a burgeoning welfare state. This is not a recipe for long-term success at all. How do, how do you see this playing out in the markets, particularly the equity markets, the bond markets and, and the currency markets? Well, the one thing, while inflation remo remains subdued, uh, you, you're going to actually, you know, I think still find support to selective bond markets. You're really finding that un hinging around the edges to the Greek, Spain, Portugal bond markets are not behaving themselves uh, as one would expect. In other words, assets that are safe havens because of the debt risk that now that you're now actually getting a default risk in what should be your risk-free assets. But at the moment, your German uh, bond market is still solid. Even your Japanese bond market is solid, and, and of course your, your U.S. bond market is solid. They will still remain assets of, uh, you, you know, to go to when there's trouble. Uh, while there's still the recovery, the prospect of the stock market still grinding a bit high, I think is there. But I think if, if I step back and look at this, it looks like they've made that the stock market has made a major high in in, in April, and that we 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 in at least for a period of a bear market for you know, maybe for the next two, three quarters or so. If, if, if not, I, I sincerely hope not worse. Uh, your precious metals continue to move higher as currencies continue to wrestle. The strength of the dollar is not because things have suddenly been improving in, enormously in the US, you know, to the detriment of the, the Euro, Eurozone. It's just that the Eurozone just got a whole lot worse than the, than the, the, than the conditions in the dollar uh, compared to the beginning of the year where the, 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 the dollar was highly unloved and money was flowing towards the Eurozone. Uh, looking at our uh, situation here in South Africa, we had some data last week. We had a quarterly bulletin out, current account deficit 4.6%, jobs still being lost in South Africa, inflation tame for the moment. Yes. Where are we going from here? We're getting some more numbers out this week. Are we seeing the recovery intact in South Africa? I believe so, although we, we the, the recovery is sort of the best, the sweetest part, which I believe is in the second half of this year, is going into uh, you know, weakness that seems to be becoming more apparent in your, in our trading partners that that seems to be resurfacing there. But um, the the credit cycle, for instance, is on the is is in the process of turning. The lead and lag as far as interest rates will start, you know, will be kicking in in a stronger way in the second half of the year. For instance, there's the spending multiplier, for instance, of the of the World Cup that, that will will have at least some uh, boost in the second half of this year. 
Uh, plus, we'll be getting back to work after the World Cup as well, which will also help to boost productivity in the wake of the World Cup. So I think we're in for a reasonably strong second half going into the in, into the um, next year. You know, when it comes to the G20 and cutting budget deficits, I don't think South Africa has to do much because our budget deficit seems to be closing naturally. In other words, the, the, the uh, recovery seems to be intact and that the budget is repairing itself on a natural way. I just hope that as we get into a recovery, we go back into surplus and stay in a surplus and are prepared to tolerate it so that we can start clawing back the, um, you know, the rise in debt that, that we, we, we saw, the, at least the rise in the debt ratio that we saw, um, which, was not, which was quite uncomfortable.